this is really cool. What are you looking at? The Andromeda Galaxy. Oh yeah, I see it from here. Let me take a look at it in the scope. Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... Distinctly Yukon, the Westmark Whitehorse Hotel and Conference Center is the Yukon's premier lodging facility. Make your reservations today at westmarkhotels.com. Westmark Hotels, with nine unique locations throughout Alaska and the Yukon. October is a great month to take a look at the Andromeda Galaxy. M31. You can find it with the naked eye. It is in the constellation Andromeda. Andromeda is in the sky with her family, Cassiopeia, Cepheus, and Perseus. Andromeda is just south of her mother, Cassiopeia. Find Cassiopeia by finding the North Star and the Big Dipper. Cassiopeia looks like a W and is on the other side of the North Star from the Big Dipper. M31 is a spiral galaxy, just like the Milky Way. It is about 2.5 million light years away. At a magnitude of 3.4, it is easy to find with your naked eye. M31 contains over a trillion stars, making it about three times bigger than the Milky Way. Right next to Andromeda, to the west, is Pegasus. In fact, Andromeda and Pegasus share a star although today it is considered the star is actually part of Andromeda. But if you use that star, you'll easily see it makes up a giant square in the night sky, the Great Square of Pegasus. Pegasus is a white horse with wings. Pegasus sprang from the neck of Medusa when Perseus chopped her head off. Pegasus flew away and became friends with the Muses. Then he flew to Mount Olympus, home of the gods, where Zeus used him to carry his thunder and lightning bolts. Zeus placed Pegasus in the sky where he is the seventh largest constellation in the world. There are some nice deep sky objects in Pegasus. M15 is a nice globular cluster. It is magnitude 6.2, so it is easy to make out in binoculars. And it is about 33,600 light years away. M15 is around 12 billion years old, making it one of the oldest globular clusters known. It contains more than 100,000 stars. M15 also contains a planetary nebula, the first planetary nebula discovered within a globular cluster. The nebula is magnitude 15.5, so it's not easy to see. NGC 7742 is a spiral galaxy. It is magnitude 12.35 and is 72.4 million light years away, so it is very dim to see. The galaxy is seen face on and has a bright center. A galaxy much easier to see is NGC 7331. It is a magnitude 10.4 at 40 million light years away. It's about the same size and shape as the Milky Way. It has a bright center and is very pretty. Pegasus is also home to Stefan's Quintet. You won't be finding this in your backyard scope, as it is pretty faint at magnitude 14, but it is worth noting. Stefan's Quintet is a group of five, count them, five galaxies. They were first discovered in 1877 in Marseille, France, by Edouard Stefan. Four of the five galaxies are a compact group that are interacting with each other. They are about 280 million light years from us. The fifth galaxy looks like it is part of the group, but in fact it is only 40 million light years away, so much closer and only appears part of the group from our perspective here on Earth. The close galaxy is NGC 7320 and is in the upper left of this photo taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. The three galaxies on the right are all distorted as they are interacting with each other. The one in the middle is actually two galaxies that collided. You can see the two distinct centers of each galaxy. The galaxy at the bottom left is less impacted by the others. The interaction of these galaxies has started tons of areas of new star formation. For those of you in the southern hemisphere, 
Just south of Aquarius, you will find Sculptor. Sculptor was not seen by the ancients and has no myths or stories associated with him. It was named in 1751 and represents a sculptor's studio. Just south of Sculptor, you will find the Phoenix. It was also named by the Dutch in the 16th century. Phoenix is a mythical bird best known from the ancient Greeks. In the Greek stories, the phoenix lived over 500 years and then flew up into a tree and set itself on fire. As it died in the fire, a baby phoenix was born and flew from it out of the fire. It's from this story that we say one rises from the ashes like a phoenix. A lot of cultures has a bird like the phoenix in its stories. The ancient Egyptians said it was born each morning, rising out of the fire of the sun, and then died each night as the sun set. The Chinese said it was the union of yin and yang. It was the symbol of the empress, representing the power sent from the heavens. Sculptor has several interesting objects to explore. One of the more famous is the R. Sculptress. At magnitude 5.77, it is easy to see. It is a red giant in the final stage of life throwing off its gases. It is located 1,500 light years from Earth. The Sculptor Group is a group of galaxies, with the brightest being the Sculptor Galaxy. It is listed as NGC 253. It is a young galaxy with thousands of newborn and forming stars. At magnitude 8, it is easy to view with binoculars. NGC 300 is a bright spiral galaxy of magnitude 9. It is located only 6.07 light years from us. NGC 7793 is a magnitude 10 spiral galaxy, about 12.7 million light years away. A nice globular cluster, NGC 288, can be found in Sculptor. It is 28,700 light years away and has a magnitude of 9.37. It is easy to see with binoculars. Between Sculptor and the constellation Phoenix, we find NGC 55. NGC 55, the southern cigar galaxy, is a spiral galaxy of magnitude 7.87. It is close to us at only 7.2 million light years away. Moving on to Phoenix, we find Robert's Quartet. As the name implies, this is a group of four galaxies. Like four of the galaxies in Stefan's Quintet, these four galaxies in Robert's Quartet are interacting and colliding with each other. Also like Stefan's Quintet, these galaxies are very faint at magnitudes of over 13.8, so you probably will not be making them out unless you have a powerful scope. Now let's take a look at planet viewing in October. Mercury will be in the western horizon the first part of this month moving lower in the sky each night until it sets completely the last week of the month. Venus will be big and bright in the evening sky all month long. It will be near Scorpio most of the time, coming within 1.3 degrees of Antares on the 16th. Mars will be in the pre-dawn sky all month, rising a few hours before sunrise. Jupiter will be in the sky before sunrise in the constellation Gemini. The first three weeks of the month is your last chance to see Saturn for a while. Like Mercury, you will find Saturn moving closer toward the horizon in the evening sky each night. On the 10th, Saturn and Mercury will be about 5 degrees from each other. By the end of the month, Saturn will no longer be visible at night. Uranus will be in Pisces and visible all night long. Neptune will be in Aquarius and visible all night until the early morning. New Moon is October 4th, and Full Moon is October 18th. The universe is sure an incredible place. There's so much out there! Yeah, and wherever you are, you see a different piece of it. Since the Earth is round, people in the Southern Hemisphere see a completely different sky from those in the Northern Hemisphere. So wherever you go, sub your scope, or take out your binoculars and look at the night sky. You will be amazed of what you can find. I'm going to find Andromeda again. Until next time, happy stargazing. Now let's go get some sandwiches. Ooh, sandwiches. 
check out our other episodes and let's explore astronomy series at www.tedcookproductions.com slash lea. You will find all kinds of cool astronomy topics there. Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.